Okay, we're rolling. Over to you, Prashant. All right. Uh, thank you, everyone, uh, for joining us on Saturday. And depending on your time zone, hello, uh, good afternoon, or good morning, or good evening. So the title of uh, today's talk is Building Intelligent Enterprise Great Help Desk Bot uh, Using Conversational AI. And when I say conversational AI, uh, I will be strictly focusing on conversational AI in Microsoft ecosystem. So who am I? Uh, my name is Prashant G. Boyer. I was uh, born and raised in India. I came to United States uh, in 2007. Uh, I am a University of Maryland College Park alumni. I co-author a book called PowerShell for Office 65. I also acted as a technical reviewer for the book ProShare Point 2013 Administration. I am from Washington DC area and I organize a lot of uh, community uh, events uh, in the region. Uh, so there are uh, three user groups I currently help uh, to run. One is on AI and machine learning. Another is on Microsoft 365 or Office 65 and third one is on uh, SQL. And we also organize a lot of uh, community conferences. Uh, those used to be in-person events, uh, but after COVID-19, we converted those to uh, virtual events. So we had a successful uh, global Azure Data Fest on July 2nd. Uh, we are planning to have another uh, free virtual event called Global AI Fest, which is going to be on 31st of July. So if you are interested in learning the latest and greatest uh, information in Microsoft AI space, uh, and it doesn't matter whether you're a developer, power user, or, <clears throat> uh, or a data scientist, we will have a tons of good contents on uh, July 31st. Only caveat is most of the session uh, will be uh, as per uh, the Eastern uh, time zone. Uh, so if you are in Australia, so then that may not uh, work for you. But what we will be doing, uh, just like we are doing right now in this conference is we will be recording all the sessions and posting uh, on the YouTube later. Uh, I also help organize a SharePoint Saturday events, which runs on a similar um, uh, theme as a Dynamics 365 events, where those will be free and normally happen on a Saturday. So I'm a uh, recipient of Antarctic Service Medal, and I'm also recipient of uh, Microsoft MVP Award uh, since 2017. Uh, those of you who are not familiar with MVP Award, uh, so I don't work for Microsoft. It's just an additional recognition uh, that Microsoft gives out to the folks who does uh, technical contribution in various product group that Microsoft has. Uh, and the technical contributions can be writing blogs, creating video contents, uh, answering people's questions on various forums, <clears throat> uh, providing direct feedback to the Microsoft product group, and also uh, the speaking at uh, the various conferences. Uh, when I got awarded first time, I was a SharePoint MVP. After two years, I made a transition to AI, and this award is valid for 12 months. And after 12 months, you have to submit your contribution, and based on your contribution, uh, you either get renewed or you won't get renewed. Uh, so fortunately, I just uh, got renewed uh, on July 1st. So I'll be an AI MVP for next 12 months, and uh, will know the result uh, in next July, whether I will be for another year or not. I am currently working as a senior solution architect at Witham Digital. Uh, we used to call Portal Solutions before and we got acquired by Witham three years before. And I focus on intelligent business process automation where I touch a lot of various technology stacks uh, in Microsoft ecosystem like uh, Plower Platform, Office 65, SharePoint, uh, then Azure, uh, Microsoft Applied AI stack like uh, Cognitive Services, Bots. And my work location is in East, East Coast uh, near Washington, uh, D.C. area. So this is the flyer about our information about our company. We have uh, three Microsoft MVPs on the staff. We have done 100 plus cloud deployments and we have 50 plus dedicated consultants who are working in Microsoft uh, ecosystem. And we are in Microsoft uh, services business from long time. Uh, we are Microsoft Gold Partner from 17 years. And these are various capabilities that we have. Uh, in case you are interested, uh, uh, joining us for the future events. I will be posting these links in the chat window as well, uh, but you can follow, go to these links and find uh, find more information about uh, the future event that we are uh, organizing. So let's talk about uh, the agenda. So I will start with why we should be thinking about using bots uh, when it comes to uh, the help desk and when it comes to the customer service uh, experience. Uh, once you are convinced that yes, you would like to use bots, then we will talk about what are the options you have right now. If you have to create a bot in Microsoft ecosystem, uh, we'll start with Microsoft Bot Framework, 
Azure bot service, uh, what are the resources to follow, how to get um, uh, started. Uh, we will also talk about Microsoft Cognitive Services, which are AI as a services from Microsoft so that you can infuse uh, human cognizance in your custom applications. We will have lots of demos, key takeaways and Q&A. Even though I mentioned Q&A towards the end, uh, feel free to ask your questions at any time. I am using two monitors, so I can also monitor uh, the chat window. So you can either ask the question in the chat window or use the feature in the Teams called raise hands or uh, just unmute yourself and ask the question. So let's talk about why this session, like why we should think uh, of think of think about using bots uh, in customer uh, uh, service or customer experience or help desk or even before that, let's see why we should even consider just bots uh, in general. So I personally think uh, because of all the advancements that are happening in the computation, the tech industry in general is focusing on AI, using AI in business application. Uh, you may be hearing a lot of uh, a news uh, regarding the driverless car or autonomous car. The reason uh, the companies, the big tech companies can invest or can think of having a driverless car because now we have a processing power uh, to support that. And I think uh, the AI uh, bots and machine learning uh, are at the same stage right now when mobile development uh, was when iPhone 1 was launched. If you go back 13 years, 2007, uh, when Apple launched iPhone 1, very few companies or very few developers were writing uh, the application for the mobile device. Fast forward 13 years, uh, if I am a, a product company and I would like to launch my product, I will definitely make sure my product works on a mobile device. Uh, so similarly, uh, in next two years, next two, next two th th three years, I think uh, the AI and machine learning will be mainstream. Where if I'm a uh, work for a product development company or if I work for enterprise and I'm a business sponsor or a product sponsor, then I will definitely want to make sure that product or that particular custom application is using AI or machine learning uh, in some sense or another. One of the example I would like to give uh, regarding this transition, and again, uh, whenever we have this kind of transition in the industry, those transition doesn't happen suddenly. Those have those transition happen over the period of time without even we knowing it. Uh, Robinhood is one of uh, the company which is in uh, North America or US where when they launched three or four years before they launch as a mobile app only company and what they do is they allow you to trade uh, stocks for free and though and Robinhood was the first company which had that provision and they got so so popular after two years finally they launched a desktop app so you can see the shift has already happened in the industry where Mobile development is the first class citizen, and if you have surplus funds, then you are spending that on to uh, the desktop application. So same thing will happen with AI and machine learning, where if I'm writing a new application, uh, <clears throat> if I'm writing a new application, uh, that up, I want to make sure that application is using some kind of AI and machine learning in it. So one of the key stats I would like to mention, and if you see the stats are actually from 2017 holiday season is, so Amazon sold millions of Alexa devices in uh, holiday season of 2017, and we are actually in 2020. And uh, Alexa is nothing but a voice based bot from Amazon. Similarly, there are voice based bots available from other big enterprises like uh, Google Home is from Google. IBM Watson is from IBM. Cortana is from Microsoft. So if you again coming going back to uh, the technological shift we have seen with uh, the smartphone. When iPhone one was launched back in 2007, uh, very few companies were supporting smartphones or iPhones for the enterprises, but people started using those devices in their personal life. And now if you join any uh, enterprise or even if you join a government agency, they expect you that you have a smartphone. So we already have seen the transition where if something gets popular in your personal life, sooner or later you can you will find those kind of uh, applications or devices at work as well. So if millions of people are using something called Alexa, which is nothing but a voice based part and it's getting very, very popular, then sooner or later you will find this kind of devices sitting on your work desk and you as a developer or you as a IT, IT pro or you as a business user should know how to write applications for that, how to support these devices and how to use these devices. Another key thing which is making this transition very, very fast is all these big organization have democratized uh, AI. Uh, big organization in the sense Microsoft, Google, uh, IBM, 
uh, Amazon. So to add, so today to use AI or machine learning in your application, you don't need to be a data scientist. Uh, another one of the analogies I would like to give you here is if you have done any kind of uh, web development, uh, you may have heard about the popular frameworks like Angular or React. So as a web developer to use this framework in your application, you don't need to know how this framework is called build from ground up. All you need to know is how to use this framework in your application. So similar thing is there with the AI as a services from Microsoft or any other vendor where you don't need to know how these services are built up, what kind of machine learning algorithms they are using in the back end, as long as you know how to use those uh, services in your uh, in your application. Uh, one of the key things that you may have noticed uh, is while I'm, I gave my um, uh, bio is I don't have much background with uh, Dynamics. Uh, my most of my experience is with Office 65, uh, Azure and uh, in Power Platform with uh, Power Apps, Power Automate and uh, uh, Power Virtual Agent. So the the demos or the concepts I will be covering today will be mostly applicable to uh, that part of the Microsoft stack and not for uh, the Dynamics uh, 365. But one thing uh, I would like you to get uh, from this particular session is, OK, if you have to, let's say, implement a help desk bot, uh, which is uh, enterprise grade and which is uh, intelligent, then how, what are the approaches you have and what are the technology stack you need and how easy it is to create these bots uh, and deploy uh, in your organization? So this is the mission statement from Microsoft. Uh, they want to make sure uh, data science and AI is accessible to everyone, and it doesn't matter what your role is or where you're from. And they're really working hard uh, toward uh, this goal because a lot of products and services they have launched in last uh, two to three years. They have the, those products or services have democratized AI uh, a lot. That means anyone can use AI and uh, create smart application in Microsoft ecosystem. So when it comes to Azure AI, uh, you can divide Azure AI into three categories. Uh, where first is apps, AI apps and agents, where you have Azure Bot Service and Azure Cognitive Service. Under Knowledge Mining, you have uh, Azure Cognitive Search. Uh, under Machine Learning, we have Azure Databricks, Azure Machine Learning, and uh, Azure AI Infrastructure. So if you are a developer who is more interested in uh, consuming the application, uh, then this is uh, for you. If you are too more towards uh, in, or you are interested in machine learning and data science, uh, these are the product stacks or these are the services uh, that are applicable to you. Um, and when, and you can integrate cognitive services along with bots to make your bot <clears throat> uh, intelligent or or, or add uh, your bot uh, a human age. So if you are interested in starting in Microsoft uh, AI ecosystem, these are the links you can follow. Uh, where if you are if you are interested in cognitive services, you can go to this link and find more information about cognitive services. Similarly, for bots, you can go to this link and find more information about bots. Uh, there are really good tutorials available on um, uh, AI School and also on uh, Channel Nine. Uh, there is another site which is not mentioned here. It's called edx.org. You can also use that site uh, to follow a lot of uh, free tutorials available not only from Microsoft but other. Uh, reputed uh, educational institutions as well. So let's say if you are like me, uh, as I mentioned, I was a SharePoint MVP before and then I transitioned to AI MVP. Uh, three years before, I was very much uh, interested in learning in my, uh, learning uh, the latest and greatest info in the Microsoft AI stack, but I didn't know where to start. Uh, so if you are like me, uh, then this is the flow chart you can follow where depending on what you would like to do, whether you would like to build uh, or you have to build uh, or consume the pre-trained model. Uh, OK, uh, if you were to build your own model, then you the product for you is Azure Machine Learning. If you are uh, just uh, interested in consuming those uh, services, then Cognitive Services and Bots are for you. And in today's session, we'll be focusing on Cognitive Services and Bots. So before I, uh, oh, looks like presentation ended uh, okay someone just ended my presentation so let me start again and let me know if you can see uh, the slides again yeah yes we can okay perfect 
So before I talk about why about any questions or any comments so far and use uh, <clears throat> uh, the chat window or just unmute yourself or just use uh, the feature of raise your hand in Microsoft team. All right, I take that as a no. So let's talk about why we should uh, think about or why we should consider using bot uh, for customer service. Now I'm going to show you uh, image here and if you have worked in the help desk uh, in your career uh, you can definitely relate to this particular situation where if someone if uh, like if, if if an employee has uh, uh, some question uh, chances of like instead of reading a documentation there are higher chances that they will just uh, reach out to the help desk or they will just open a new issue and it's not uh, uncommon and, and pretty much all the organizations have this particular uh, problem where a lot of time uh, the help desk people get uh, or have to spend a lot of time in uh, answering some trivial uh, question or providing some trivial information that the users can find uh, by themselves if you just if they spend more time but uh, just like but in customer service we cannot say no to um, the client like we have to provide the information uh, so how we can use bots uh, in this kind of scenario where let's say if you have a big queue uh, of the uh, people who need help how you can use bots to decrease the workload on your human agent and uh, so that uh, the the simple or trivial request will be handled by bot and more difficult requests will be handled by your human agent Uh, so bots give you more uh, natural uh, human computer interaction and also one of the key thing is it helps you to automate the repetitive task which will end up freeing up your uh, help desk resources. Uh, bots will be available all the time uh, and uh, it will be available where you are. You can access bots using mobile uh, on web and also uh, using desktop or even if you're driving a car you can still uh, interact with the bots. And uh, bots adapt uh, to the user depending on the circumstances. And also bots are a little bit uh, latest and greatest and a little bit shiny. So if you have a bot, uh, they looks more appealing. And also if you have done implementation of uh, bots, uh, they will be more efficient as well. Uh, and if you if uh, the deployment or development of bot is right, uh, then it simplifies the UI. And if you stick with Microsoft ecosystem or if you go with Microsoft board framework, uh, if you deploy develop a bot, uh, then you can deploy that bot to multiple channels uh, without writing additional lines of code. Now the channels here means uh, devices and don't get confused with the channels here. What we got get the channels in Microsoft Teams. So the point here is if I use Microsoft board framework and if I create a bot, I can deploy that to various devices like Teams, uh, Facebook, uh, Slack or on a public facing website as well. And also a bot may help you to connect with your uh, young users as well. So we are already familiar with the bots. Uh, like if you are a customer of a major financial institution uh, like HSBC Bank or uh, Citibank or Wells Fargo. And uh, if you dial their uh, customer service number, chances are uh, the first line of defense by this financial institution will always be by a voice based bot where the bot will ask you some questions and depending on your questions and answer, the bot will redirect you to a human agent or will just provide you information uh, there only. So we are already familiar with the bots uh, in our personal lives and those are working fine. Uh, and now slowly the bots are getting purificated inside uh, the enterprises as well. And let's say if you would like to create bots uh, in your enterprise and you are interested uh, exploring the options in Microsoft ecosystem. So these are the options we have right now. So under software as a service, uh, we have a power virtual agent software as a service means Microsoft will take care of everything. They will take care of hosting the bot. They will take care of uh, maintaining the bots availability all the time. All you have to do is uh, just to configure your bot uh, with, with the business logic that you would like to have. And one of the key things about power virtual agents is it's, uh, it's a part of power platform uh, a group and it provides a no code experience for bot development. 
and the ideal and the, the targeted uh, users are the business users and the domain expert. And if you're interested in exploring Power Vulture agents, uh, this is the link you can follow and you can sign up for uh, the free trial to quickly find out how uh, easy it is to create bots using Power Virtual Agents. Under Platform as a Service, uh, we have Microsoft Bot Framework, which is an open source uh, SDK and tools which are built for the purpose of bot development. And you can find more information about uh, the bot framework here. So the target audience for Microsoft Bot Frameworks are uh, developers, uh, but you, uh, as if you have access to Azure, and you, if you have access to Microsoft Cognitive Services, especially QA Maker Service, you can create a, a, a working bot using QA Maker Service and Microsoft Bot Framework without writing a single line of code. Of course, the functionality of that bot will be limited, uh, but there is a still possibility that uh, if you don't have license to Power Virtual Agent, still you can create a no code bot using Microsoft Bot Framework and QA Maker Service with limited functionality as long as you have access to Azure. However, for any advanced use case, uh, you need to you have developers who will work with you and uh, build uh, the bots for you. So when it comes to uh, the relationship between the Power Virtual Agents and Microsoft Bot Framework, so Power Virtual Agents are actually built on the top of Microsoft Bot Framework, and there is a really good integration story available here where Power Virtual Agents are, the, are designed for the business users. Uh, Microsoft Bot Framework is designed for uh, developers. But let's say, uh, and Power Virtual Agents are new. Uh, Microsoft announced about those uh, Power Virtual Agents during the Ignite last year, which is in November 2019. And Microsoft Bot Framework is there from last three, four years. So let's say you already have created uh, bots using Microsoft Bot Framework how you can integrate that with Power Virtual Agent. So there is a good integration story available where you can deploy uh, the custom built bots uh, as a skills, and then you can consume those bots uh, inside the Power Virtual Agent. And there is a good uh, documentation available from Microsoft. You can read and uh, find out how to uh, achieve that. But this will help you to bridge the gap where uh, the power, the power users or the business users will start creating bots using Power Virtual Agents. And if you need a, to include custom code, uh, then uh, the developers will use Microsoft Bot Framework. And then when you will do integration between the Power Virtual Agents and Microsoft Bot Framework uh, or custom built bots using Microsoft Bot Framework using uh, Bot Framework skills. So let's talk about uh, what is Microsoft Bot Framework. Before I go further, any questions so far? All right, I take that as a no. So Microsoft Bot Framework, as I mentioned, is an open source SDK uh, and tools, uh, which gives you, uh, the, uh, which helps you to create uh, the bot. And one thing I would like to take you, take, uh, I would like, I want, uh, I or I prefer you guys take home from this talk is treat bot as a website. Uh, so uh, if you have developed a website uh, in your uh, career and doesn't matter what kind of technological stack you have used, the same kind of principles also goes uh, when it comes to the bots as well. So you will need to have a server where you'll be hosting the bot. You will need to make sure that server is up and running all the time. And the bot will just basically offer you a, a different kind of user interface as compared to a traditional uh, website. So here you will be using the bot builder SDK and you will you will build your bot, which will nothing which is nothing but a, a web service. And then to add a human uh, edge or to add intelligence to your bot, you will be using uh, various cognitive services available in Microsoft Stack. Now again, uh, the cognitive AI as a services or cognitive services are optional here. You can also infuse. Uh, let's say if you're an IBM shop, you can also infuse uh, the AI as a services from IBM or Google or AWS as well. And once you have your bot ready, then you can deploy that bot to various channels. Uh, by default, uh, default your bot is already deployed as a web chat, but you can also expand that to various channels. Some of the channels are free, some of the channels are uh, a premium. Uh, so these are the list of channels which are supported and Microsoft is working hard uh, to add the support for additional channels as well. So that brings us the key point. Uh, the, in the previous slide, I mentioned uh, just treat your bot as a website uh, with a different kind of user interface. 
if bot is nothing but a website, then where we can host them? Uh, so you have various options to host the bots. Uh, recommended approach or recommended option is use Azure Bot Service, where you get maximum uh, um, a value, where you'll see a tighter integration of bots with other Microsoft uh, services, uh, and also uh, you will find more support in terms of helps and guidance. Uh, on Microsoft technologies uh, or Microsoft documentation. And also if you're stuck, you can open a support case with Microsoft and uh, get it resolved. However, uh, if you are not a mic, if you if you uh, if you are using a public cloud and but you're not using Azure and if you have other public clouds like AWS or Google Cloud or public cloud from IBM, you can still use Microsoft bot framework and you can still host uh, bots over there. So you can host uh, bots on virtual machine. Uh, and those virtual machines can be in Azure or any other public cloud, or those virtual machines can be in your on-premise server as well. So the reason I mentioned uh, that I highlighted the on-premise server is if you are working for an agency or for or an enterprise which is not comfortable using public cloud as of yet, you can still use Microsoft Bot Framework and create the bots and host themselves in your own uh, infrastructure. So this is uh, <clears throat> uh, the the flow chart you should be following uh, whether you are creating a help desk bot or whether you are creating a bot or like a generic bot or whether you are creating uh, a bot using uh, let's say even power virtual agent where bots are very new uh, if you compare that with the website developments and the mobile development and there is not much expertise or not much uh, experience available uh, in uh, in the uh, in, in in the world so one thing you need to do uh, where you will be spending a lot of time is a uh, planning uh, where you will be designing uh, how the user experience will be, what kind of question uh, the user will ask and what kind of answer uh, the bot will provide and in, in what format. Then when it comes to building, uh, you can use Bot Builder SDK to infuse the AI. You can use uh, Cognitive Services. Uh, there are some templates available as well. And again, Cognitive Services are optional here. You can use uh, AI as a services from other vendors as well. Uh, then you can, uh, the next thing you'll be doing is testing the bot. Here, uh, Microsoft has built a tool called uh, Emulator, which is a cross-platform open source. Using that tool, you can uh, test uh, the bots locally on your machine as well. Then the next thing is publish your bots. Uh, you can either publish in uh, Azure or you can use your own uh, web host as well. And then once it's published, then you can configure uh, uh, or connect to the various channels. And the last thing which is most important uh, where you will be spending a lot of time is evaluating. Uh, Launching a bot is not enough. You have to constantly evaluate how your bot is doing, what kind of questions your users are asking and whether a bot is able to answer those questions or not. And uh, <clears throat> uh, if you need to tweak anything, uh, so that will be uh, the, here you will be doing that. So once you launch it, then you'll be evaluating that. And then depending on the feedback, they will you'll be making those additional changes and the cycle will continue. So when it comes to Microsoft Stack and when it comes to the conversational AI, uh, because going back to my earlier analogy, a bot is nothing but a website. And by default, a website will not have any kind of human intelligence in it. You had to add AI services to add infuse human intelligence into your bot. So to do that under Microsoft ecosystem, we have this many options or services available as of today. One of the service which is under cognitive services is language understanding intelligence service or the short form is Lewis. The second is Azure Search uh, Q&A Maker, which is a really uh, easy way to get started uh, creating the bots. Um, uh, then we have a Bing Speech API, Speaker Recognition API, Translator, and Custom Speech Service. So these are various conversational AI tools which we are uh, we have available today, which we can use to create intelligent bots in Microsoft ecosystem. So let me quickly show you uh, a demo. So from now onwards, we'll be spending most of the time is demo. So the first demo I have is a Power Virtual Agent, and this is uh, using Power Virtual Agent. How quickly we can have, we can cover a scenario uh, inside your enterprise help desk and. To create this demo, all it it took me like less than uh, an hour to create this demo. So let me open up the Power Virtual Agent here, and 
Let me know if you can uh, see my screen. All right, looks like I need to sign in again. Uh, so let me quickly click on signing. And if this is the first time you are seeing about the, the Power Virtual Agent, uh, just use your favorite browser and use your uh, favorite search engine and just search for Microsoft uh, Power Virtual Agent. And there you, you'll you'll see the option of uh, <clears throat> uh, signing for the free trial as well. So here, what I did is I created a simple uh, help desk bot where right now I just covered one scenario. Uh, looks like I need to do this again. Let me do the refresh. Hopefully this will fix all these annoying pop-ups. All right, while this is loading, let me put some information in the chat window. So if you are on LinkedIn, uh, feel free to connect with me on the LinkedIn. I'm just posting the link uh, for uh, my profile here. And uh, if you are interested in at, uh, attending the free AI, uh, AI ML virtual conference, I am posting the link uh, for that as well. And I'm also posting the link for the user group we have where we will be keeping uh, or updating or posting the latest and greatest information about all the upcoming events and uh, the conferences. All right, so here what I've done is I just created a simple enterprise help desk bot. And the way the Power Virtual Agents work is you need to have uh, a different topics and those topics and you, under those topics, uh, you can uh, design uh, the various user experience. And every topic will will we need to have uh, some trigger phrases. Uh, and Microsoft recommends you can start with five to ten uh, phrases, but you can also add some more. So this particular topic, which is called IT issues, uh, will get triggered whenever a user will ask questions to a bot, which contains any of these particular phrases like slow machine. I need a new machine. Laptop is very slow. Laptop or computer is not working. And then there is a button here called go to authoring canvas. So if I click on here, I will be getting a web based canvas where I can des design uh, or configure my bot in terms of what kind of questions the bot will be answering uh, depending on the user's input, what kind of next steps uh, the bot uh, will be taking. <clears throat> and uh, Power Virtual Agents are, uh, will give you uh, the designer comes with a drag and drop functionality. But what if if you have to in uh, like infuse or integrate the custom code uh, with your Power Virtual Agents? So for that you have two options. Uh, from a Power Virtual Agent, you can call uh, already built bot uh, as long as that bot is deployed as a skill, or you can call a Power uh, Automate or or Microsoft Flow from a bot, which will uh, which will act as a gateway to the external system. For example. From this Power Virtual Agent, if I had to call a web service uh, so that I can get some query, some information, and then provide that to the user, the way I can do that is from this Power Virtual Agent, I will call a flow. And inside the flow, that flow will then call that web service. And whatever the value uh, that will get returned from that web service, the flow will return back to the Power Virtual Agent. And then Power Virtual Agent will then display that to, to the user. So here, the implementation is very, very simple. and uh, the idea behind this is, or the goal behind this particular demo is to give you some kind of uh, uh, small demo where, okay, it is possible to use something like a Power Virtual Agent and uh, create a help desk bot to free up uh, the valuable time from your human ID agent. So here, uh, if the user asks any of these questions, uh, then the bot will give the message, I'm sorry, you have some problems, and then it will ask the first question whether are you stuck right now? That means you can you still do your work or you cannot do your work? Depending on the answer, uh, if you they, there are two choices, yes or no. If the answer is yes, that means a work emergency, then I will transfer the control to uh, a human agent. If it's not a work emergency, then I will ask additional questions. Uh, did you reboot your machine? Because a lot of times, especially in the Windows ecosystem, if you reboot your machine, that fixes a lot of issues. Uh, then uh, depending on the answer, then uh, <clears throat> uh, 
we will be ask uh, additional question how old is is your machine if the machine is greater if the machine's age is more than 3 years then uh, we are asking the user to fill a form uh, to request a new computer uh, if the machine is uh, new enough then uh, we are passing the control to the human agent so um now let's go back here and uh, test uh, this bot so i have built this bot and i have already published this bot uh, on two two channels uh, one is uh, uh, the web uh, custom website and another is uh, microsoft teams so every power virtual agents come with a demo website that you can use uh, to quickly test your bot uh, uh, so let's see let's copy this url and and paste it here all right while it's loading uh, any questions so far okay uh, let me ask hello and if the bot is working fine it will come back with uh, the answer okay so this is uh, the predefined uh the greetings and you can customize those as well so the last question from the bot is so what can i help you with today and i'm just uh, typing uh, my machine is slow and uh, if you remember this is one of the trigger phrase i have uh, for the topic called it support and then uh, the power virtual agent uh, recognized that and now it's asking me the follow up questions which i, I have designed uh, in uh, in the canvas here so if i go back here to the topic and if i go to the it issues and if i go to the authoring canvas so the user experience that you see here will be the exactly same that uh, that we we are showing here uh, maybe not this one okay this one no all right uh so the first question is asking are you stuck right now uh depending on the answer no i'm not stuck i'm just going to click no i'm not stuck i can the i can still uh use the machine did you reboot your machine uh answer yes how old your machine uh 3 sorry i'll say 4 uh i will say 4 years old and again here i i type a uh, response just like a human will do so i type 4 years old but uh, and if you go back to uh, the authoring canvas here i asked the question and uh, the answer i'm expecting is in the number but when i answer this question uh, along with number i also type the text as well but the power virtual agent was smart enough to detect uh, the key information which was the number from this one and use that for uh the further uh, execution of this so depending on the number so we have a condition here if the number is more than 3 uh then uh, give additional <clears throat> uh, uh additional message to it so here uh it give me the information okay you are eligible for a new computer please submit a request and if i click on this it's opening up a new page uh in the sharepoint you can use uh the microsoft form as well to submit uh, the request for a new computer and it comes back with some predefined information and uh if i say yes that answer my question and the next uh, it's asking for the feedback and let's say like imagine if this is just consider this situation in uh, in your work uh, let's say if someone is having an issue with your laptop and instead of calling a help desk person uh, let's say your first line of defense is a chatbot and if the chatbot is able to take care of this then that means you are saving the valuable 5 or 10 minutes from which your human uh, help desk person can then spend on uh, solving the critical issues or more critical issues that uh, the bot cannot uh, uh, solve so i see a question there in the chat window can we use dotnet core to build custom bot skills and if we do assume web api is the only choice to talk to cds as the cds dotnet core is the case in okay so the question first so there are two parts here the first question is can we use dotnet core to build custom bot skills 
Yes, uh, .NET uh, Microsoft Board Framework is supported uh, into multiple languages uh, uh, like C Sharp, Node.js. Uh, there is support for Python and there is support for Java as well. One thing to note, however, is if you are if you develop the bot using Microsoft Bot Framework, and if you would like to host that bot using Azure Web Service, like in in Azure using Azure Bot Service, then the only choice of language you can use right now is .NET, uh, C Sharp, or uh, or Node.js. So the support for Java uh, and support for Python is still not available in Azure Bot Service. Then the next question is uh, part two of this is. Uh, if we do, I assume Web API is the only choice to talk to CDS as CDS.NET Core still in alpha. Uh, I'm not familiar with that particular uh, piece, uh, but if you are using .NET Core, uh, then yes, uh, if the support for, uh, let's say CDS is not available in .NET Core, then yes, you, that's the only option you have. Or what you can do is uh, you can add additional wrapper in between where you have your custom bot skills between uh, build using .NET Core. Then you have a wrapper web service which you call from your um, uh, uh, skills. And then that can be built uh, again using .NET Core or any other language of your choice. And then that wrapper then in turn uh, talk to your CDS. And, and then there you can use uh, any language of your choice because as long as it's built using the REST principles, you should be able to call that from any uh, any language or any platform of your choice. I hope uh, that answers your question. So here we just saw a quick demo of uh, using Power Virtual Agents uh, to uh, build uh, enterprise grade help desk bot. And this was a very, very simple solution. Uh, like it didn't include uh, a lot of uh, uh, complex scenarios uh, because I wanted to give you uh, some ideas in terms of like, okay, this is possible so you can Take this idea and then you know uh, uh, add some additional uh, features for it. Then the next demo I have is using uh, the QA Maker service. Uh, QA Maker service is part of uh, Microsoft Community Services, and for this you need uh, the subscription to uh, to the Azure. So let's jump on to the QA Maker demo. So for that, uh, use your favorite uh, browser and uh, just search for uh, Microsoft in a maker. And the link you're looking for is uh, qnamaker.ai. So once you go there, you can sign up for QA Maker for free. And if you are using a device where you can use a browser as well, I'll highly recommend that you follow these steps along with me as well. So you can have a working bot uh, or a chat bot uh, in next uh, 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, all right, so the first thing we need to do is in the Q&A maker is you need to create a knowledge base. And first thing first, you need to create a Q&A maker service in Microsoft Azure to host uh, that knowledge base. And uh, to do that, just click on create a Q&A service. And then this will take you to uh, to the Azure portal. And uh, here, what we're doing is we're creating a queue, a, a new uh, QA Maker service. And then here, it will ask you for a bunch of information like the name, the subscription, the pricing tier. Uh, QA Maker service also comes with a free tier as well. Uh, but you are allowed to use only one free free subs uh, free tier per subscription. So I already created another service with free tier, so this particular option is grayed out, but I can always use the standard one, then the resource group, um, and then the Azure search pricing. Again, same thing, uh, you can use the free one, or you can go with the paid one, uh, and the first one with that is basic B. Then the Azure search location. One thing that you should keep in mind uh, when you're using public cloud or is, uh, whatever the resources you are creating, make sure you create it in the same geographical location. So that means all the things I'll be creating today, I'll make sure I'll be using East US. And depending on your uh, location, if you are from the West Coast and your users will be from the West Coast, then make sure you use the West Coast uh, data centers here. Uh, then the name of uh, the app, uh, the website location, I'll be using East US, and the app inside location uh, will be using East US, and then click Create. 
So once you click create, this will take uh, one or two minutes uh, to create this service. To save the time, I have already created the service. Uh, so I will not be doing that operation, but you can do that. And once you do that, the next thing you have to do is just click on the refresh button here. Uh, and once you click on the refresh button, uh, as long as the QNA maker service is created, we can see that uh, into the drop down here, um, which is this one. So first thing first, uh, you have to select uh, the Microsoft Azure directory ID. And if you're not sure uh, your directory ID, just go to portal.azure.com and then go to uh, <clears throat> Active Directory and there you will see the default name uh, for your. Uh, so just click on the Azure Directory here and on the in the left hand navigation, uh, you will uh, there will be option where if you see the properties, you will get uh, the default name. So if so uh, under the overview, I should be seeing uh, the default name. So this is this one. And then uh, the subscription name under this account, I have multiple subscriptions, so I'll be using the one where I have created the service. Uh, then inside that, this is the service I created and then the language. Uh, so this is important because this is the only time when uh, you can uh, specify the language when you are creating uh, the QNA maker service. So I have provided for this service uh, the language as English, so I cannot change that. But if you try to expand that, you will get the support for uh, additional popular languages there as well. Um, so if you are working for a multi national company and some of your users are in uh, other countries where English is not commonly used, uh, then you can just find out whether that language is supported or not, and you can have an, a knowledge base in, in that language as well. Then you have to provide the name uh, of your uh, knowledge base. Then you have to provide the location from your you will be pro populating the knowledge base. So the example that I will be giving here is we will be creating a knowledge base or FAQs regarding the COVID-19. And I, I am getting that information from the US government's uh, public uh, facing website or a Center for Disease Control and Prevention where they have listed uh, the frequently asked question about COVID-19. So we'll be using that. And let's say your information is not available on a publicly facing website. It's uh, you can also use upload uh, the information in the form of uh, PDFs or doc X files as well. That means let's say you have information in your corporate intranet, but that intranet is behind a firewall. You can download that information in the form of PDF or, doc, uh, or, or document file format and then upload those documents here. And the next thing is you select the persona. Uh, what kind of persona you would like to have here? Uh, depending on your target audience, you can go with professional, friendly, witty, or caring. If you would like to have some uh, funny uh, experience, just go with the witty. And then finally, you will be click on create your knowledge base. Depending on uh, your internet speed and depending on how many questions that uh, this particular URL will have or the file that you will be using, this operation will take two to three minutes. Again, I have this entire demo of this. Uh, I've done uh, two weeks before on another platform, another conference under uh, Dynamics 365. So you will be finding that video with a step by step instruction on the same uh, YouTube channel where this talk will also get uploaded. So just go to that channel and uh, you will find uh, I, I did a talk on bots three or four weeks before and there I have followed uh, the step by step instruction to create this. Since I want to cover a lot, I'm not going to go through that. So the next thing I'll be showing you is uh, the knowledge base which I have already created using this particular uh, public facing uh, website, which is COVID-19 FAQs. So once uh, we scan the content of that particular site, uh, the information will be displayed in the form of question and answers. And you can test that out here itself uh, in the Q&A maker page where um, Uh, what are the risk? So if I ask this question and if there are any information, uh, if the information is already there in this knowledge base, that that information will get surfaced to me here. All right. Uh, so the next thing I'll be doing is I'll be publishing this. And once I publish this, then the next thing I can do is using this knowledge base, uh, once this knowledge base is published, I have three options uh, to consume this knowledge base. So if you see here, 
Microsoft has given you here the instruction to how to consume this knowledge base using Postman and using curl. Uh, but you can also create a bot which will basically use this service and and your bot will basically using that service. Uh, this community maker service to answer the questions. Uh, so you can you can click here, create a bot and dispatch and then again it will launch uh, the Azure portal where it will ask you uh, where it will be opening in the page where you will be creating a new bot using uh, Azure bot service. And one thing that is there which is pre populated for you is uh, the subscription key for your QA maker service here. So you will see here uh, the QA maker auth key is already pre populated and uh, Coquelin asked the question about uh, the language uh, job support. So if you go with Azure, if you would like to deploy your bot to Azure, then right now the only two languages that are supported is C Sharp and Node.js. But if you are not deploying in the Azure and if you're deploying into your own infrastructure, then you can use Python and uh, uh, Java as well. Again, I feel you go with with the same kind of uh, drill here where you provide the bot name, subscription, resource, the location, the pricing tier. Uh, you can also start with the free tier as well, uh, or you can start with the premium one. Then the choice of your language. This is important while you're deploying the bot. You, this is the only time you can decide what kind of language you can use. Uh, after that, if you would like to decide to go to Node.js, you have to basically create a new bot. Uh, then uh, the app service plan, the application insights, and then once you click create, uh, the bot will get created. And again, it, this deployment will take uh, two to uh, three minutes. Uh, I don't want to do that right now because it will consume two to three minutes and we are running towards the end. So what I will show you is already created bot uh, from this particular uh, knowledge base. And it is this one. So once your bot is deployed, uh, you can test uh, that bot right here into the Azure portal itself. Hello, and let me ask the same question. Uh, what are the risks? OK, uh, so looks like the bot is working fine uh, from this bot. If I ask the question, uh, it will basically <clears throat> uh, it is basically connecting to the Q&A maker service and and if the answer is there, it is showing us the answer. Then in the channel section, I have deployed this bot uh, to the two channels. So by default, when you deploy a bot, it's already available as a web chat, but you can also deploy that bot to Microsoft Teams. You can also add support to the additional channels as well. Uh, then next thing is, if I had to use this bot in, uh, as a web chat, then how I can do that? So if I had to consume this bot I'd sort of out, outside of uh, Azure portal, then I can just copy this URL here. And the next thing I need is I need uh, uh, this key. Again, you make sure you are not sharing this key with anyone else. I know this uh, demo is getting recorded, so I'll make sure I will uh, reset this key so it will not be applicable to the public or available for the public here. So in this URL, all I need to do is change uh, this key here. And then using this link, I should be able to access this bot outside of uh, the Azure portal. So that means if you have a public facing website or if you have an intranet portal, uh, then you can quickly add this bot uh, just like I did here where I have a page here, uh, a COVID-19 FAQs. And on this page, I have added uh, that uh, page URL. And here, the employees of my organization then can ask questions regarding the COVID-19 uh, and the bot will basically able to answer the generic questions here. So if I type hello, and if everything is work fine, uh, then what are the risks? So imagine like if you if your employees need information about COVID-19, uh, you can have something like this uh, up and running really quick where you have a bot which will be giving uh, providing answers to the basic questions and if they need additional information which is not possible to surface via bot because it's very complicated then you transfer the control to the human agent or they can or you can provide the additional information here so this is this was a quick and easy demo of uh, having a, a help desk bot using the QA maker service 
the next one uh, is there is also a template available uh, using the Microsoft Board framework. It's it, the name of the template is virtual assistants using Visual Studio. We are not going to go through the detailed steps here because uh, it's going to be time consuming. But what I have here is the link you can go here. Uh, here you will find a step by step instruction uh, where you will be like which you can follow to use this template and create a help desk bot uh, which you can deploy uh, in your organization. Another thing I want to highlight real quick is which is related to the Azure. If you have access to Azure uh, there and if you are interested in just creating a bot which is uh, where you don't want to go through the bot, but you you want to take uh, take uh, advantage of marketplace. So if you search for virtual assist, there are some templates already available for you from third party vendors that you can do. Like there's already a template available from co for COVID-19 virtual assist that you can use. Uh, only thing you have to find out is what's the pricing for it. So right now it looks like this is free and this is from this particular organization. And you can also build your own template and you can deploy that to the Azure marketplace as well. Uh, here, let's go. One thing I want to show is a web app bot. So if I click on create here, uh, this will uh, make a lot of confusion clear to you is uh, not this particular page because it's showing me the same one. Uh, the page I was looking for is, let's say a bot. Uh, uh, uh. Okay. Uh, the overview. Maybe not. Sorry, I will. If I find that, I will paste uh, that link uh, later on, which where that link will give you uh, multiple options or additional information in terms of the templates and other thing. So if you are interested in creating a real. Uh, Virtual Assistant bot using Microsoft Board Framework. I'll highly recommend you go through this link uh, and then follow the instructions and have your bot uh, uh, ready. And then again, it will be built on a template using Visual Studio uh, or you can also use Node.js and then uh, you can <clears throat> add uh, some additional business logic to it. Uh, since we have five more minutes, let me quickly sh cover the last part or uh, last section, which is so in the demo I showed you there are two options while creating the bots in Microsoft uh, ecosystem. One is uh, the power virtual agents and second is the bot framework. So these are my thoughts and again, uh, these are my personal thoughts. Uh, you may have a different opinion on that. Uh, so as of today, uh, these are the things you get uh, if we compare these two, uh, the power virtual agents versus Microsoft bot framework. Power virtual agents are easy to create and test the bots whereas Microsoft Bot Framework, it's a little bit steep learning curve. Like you had to learn or understand a lot of different different concepts and different lot different tools. Uh, the ta it's, so using Power Virtual Agents, Power Users and IT Pros can create the bots, whereas to use Microsoft Bot Framework, you need developers. Uh, the maintenance and enhancements are really easy. Uh, the maintenance and enhancement are a little bit cumbersome because uh, depending on where you are hosting, you had to go through the deployment cycle. Uh, Power Virtual Agents uses a lot of AI services under the hood, but you as a dull, you as a power user or the one who's developing the bot, he or she does not need to understand or need to know what kind of AI services Microsoft is using under the hood. Whereas here, if you go with Microsoft Bot Framework, you need to do additional work to integrate AI services like Lowest, QA Maker Service, or other con con cognitive services in, within your bot. Uh, there is an inbuilt support for analytics here with Power Virtual Agents. Uh, there is no inbuilt support for analytics. You have to use your own own uh, uh, third party app or if you are in or you can also use app insights from in Azure. However, uh, Power Virtual Agents are expensive to begin with. If you go to the pricing product pricing page right now, as of today, I think the, the basic starting point is $1,000 per month per bot. And uh, there is no easy way to manage uh, cost across the departments. Uh, whereas Microsoft Break Bot Framework is very inexpensive to begin with. However, you as a developer need to uh, 
take into account a lot of uh, different services uh, like where you will be hosting the bot. If you go with Azure bot service, then you have to take into account the cost for Azure bot service. If you are using App Insights, then you have to take into account the cost for App Insights, the search, the Kongo services. So the work is here more, but the begin the starting price point is lower here. So if you have developers and uh, if you have any business case where you cannot use Power Virtual Agents, uh, then yeah, you can go with Microsoft Bot Framework. But if you just want to offload uh, creating of the bots to the power users or the business users, you can start with Power Virtual Agents and later on you can integrate Power Virtual Agents with uh, Microsoft Bot Framework to add uh, additional customizations. Is uh, in case you don't have access to the Office 65 and you are interested in learning the latest and greatest uh, in Power Platform like uh, <clears throat> uh, Power Apps, uh, Power Automate, uh, SharePoint, or Teams, uh, there is a way where you can get your personal tenant for free. Just go to this link and sign up for the developer program where once you join the program, you can get your own tenant with E5 subscription, which is good for three months and it comes with 25 users. And also you can sign up for the free trial. Uh, since uh, to you to deploy bots or to infuse AI from Microsoft ecosystem into your bots, you need to have Azure subscription. These are various ways uh, where you can get Azure subscription. Uh, MSDN is the recommended one. If you have access to it, you can also sign up for the free trial where right now uh, in US, Microsoft is giving $200 of credit, which is good for 12 months. Or you can also sign up for Microsoft Imagine program where you need a valid account from a .edu. Uh, you need a valid .edu account from a particip participating school and you can get Azure subscription for that from that. So hopefully the contents we covered today made you excited about the bots and you will think about using chatbots uh, in your help desk as well. So these are my contact details. Uh, thank you very much for patiently listening to me from last uh, one uh, hour. Uh, feel free to connect me on LinkedIn. Uh, feel I'm also on Twitter and if you have any follow up questions, uh, do not hesitate to contact me on my email address as well. So with that, thank you very much and I will be addressing the two questions that I see into the chat window. Is there a multilingual support while creating a bot? So you had to add that support inside the bot. Uh, when it's come to the Power Virtual Agent, I don't think uh, the multilingual support is there right away. But when it comes to the custom bot, you can have that support inside the bot where the first question you ask to the bot is what kind of uh, language you prefer and depending the language, then you do you show the surface, you surface the information from different QA maker service or different uh, Lewis service or something like that. Then the next question is the AI builder is getting more and more feature added. Do you think this will reduce the need for building custom build? Uh, OK, so my thought says yes, AI builder is a great way to start uh, uh, using uh, models where you don't need to understand how the machine learning part of it. Uh, but again, AI builder is a little bit expensive to start with uh, and it is a part of power platform and you will see more and more integration uh, between AI Builder and Power Platform products like Power Virtual Agents, uh, Power Apps, and Power Automate and Power BI. So with that, let me know if you have any other questions. Otherwise, thank you very much. And I'm sorry, I'm I went one minute over. Uh, so if there are no further questions, then um, uh, Hemendra, please go ahead, and I will uh, stop sharing my screen.